Welcome to Art with Ryan. Today we're going to talk about why is Van Gogh famous? I mean, he's everywhere. From magazines to magnets on your refrigerator, posters in the hallways at school. He's everywhere. Why is he famous? Well, a few things we know about him are that he's Dutch. He was born in 1853, died in 1890, so he's 37 years old. He had one brother, Theo, who comes into an important play in the life of Van Gogh. So now we're going to talk about a few of his important works, and we're going to say, why are these works important? First one we're going to talk about, the potato eaters. So this is when Van Gogh was working as a priest. So Van Gogh had several jobs throughout his life. He wasn't just a painter or always a painter. He did have to pay the bills. So at this point in his life, he's a, he's a priest, and he sees kind of this turmoil of the common man. And he also sees the beauty and kindness of humanity. It's a very dark painting, but there's a light emanating from inside it. Kind of that hope and spirit within all of us. Then we have Sunflowers. Now Sunflowers is one of those controversial paintings because at one point in his life, Van Gogh is, Van Gogh is sent to an insane asylum so that he can recuperate from hearing the voices in his head that he's been sending letters to his brother about. His brother's like, maybe you should go see a doctor. He goes to the uh, hospital. So now it's believed that sometimes this painting could have been painted, some of the sunflower paintings could have been painted in this hospital. So when you Google, type in Vincent Van Gogh sunflowers, you're going to see that he did many varieties. This is just one of the ones that he did about sunflowers. We're also going to talk about bedroom in Ars. Ars is where he lived towards the end of his life. This is where he shared a room with Gauguin, uh, Paul Gauguin, which was one of his friends, who you'll see in some of his paintings as you Google uh, both Paul Gauguin, you'll see portraits of Vincent van Gogh working, and you'll see portraits of Gauguin in several of van Gogh's paintings. They were friends, they lived together for a while, uh, Theo, his brother, helped pay the bills so that the two of them could work together and create a magnificent body of work. Now when, when we're talking about Van Gogh, one of the major paintings that everyone always will be talking about is this one, Starry Night. Starry Night is probably one of his most captivating paintings that he has ever created. It has this swirly night's galaxy look to it that it almost as if the sky is going to suck you up into its brilliance and the glimmering jewels of the city below. Now, it's one of those paintings that when you see it in person, there is an amazing tactile quality to the paint. And as well as when you turn slightly, you start to see different things, almost as if the oil paints that are dry are still supple and wet and almost flickering bits of light. It's very intoxicating to look at. Now, when we look at this painting, now this is a doctor. This is a very interesting painting. So it's called the, the painting Portrait of Dr. Gaget. Now, Dr. Gaget was actual Van Gogh's actual physician. So towards the end of Van Gogh's life, he's starting to get sick. He's starting to, things are starting to happen. Some of the sicknesses are caused because he's eating the paint. He would rather spend money on paint than he would on food. So when he gets hungry, he's eating and ingesting his own paint. Now, Dr. Gouget comes in and helps him with his health. So again, Van Gogh doesn't have much money. So what does he do? He barters. He does a portrait of Dr. Gouget and gives it to him as payment. Now, Van Gogh has been painting and painting and painting and painting and painting, and then he dies. We know that he sold a handful of paintings the, the mythology of he sold one painting his entire life. It's not, a real, it's not a real mythology. But he did sell some paintings, no more than a handful. But then he also used his paintings to barter to pay for rent, for food, for medicine, and different things other than um, what he could afford. He even used it to buy supplies sometimes. But then he dies. He commits suicide and he dies. So what then can we say, why is he famous? Here's a man that died having his brother pay for everything and when he couldn't, he would trade his paintings for the things he needed. 
and then he commits suicide over a woman he loves. Well, why is he famous? Well, this is why he's famous. So he dies in 1890. In 1891, almost 10 months later, his brother passes away. His brother and him had a intense correspondence over the years about sketches over, this is a painting I'm thinking about making, this is one I just made, this is what it looks like. And they had an intense, very compassionate relationship that while Vincent was in the Netherlands and Theo was in France, they corresponded. Theo dies, leaving his wife, Joanna, and their son, a widow. Here is why Vincent became famous. Joanna. Joanna, when Theo dies, has over 200 paintings by Vincent van Gogh. What do you do with these? She was living in an apartment paid for by Theo, not a large one, but had 200 paintings. She was recommended to just burn them, get rid of them. They're worthless, they're invaluable, he's not a, a good artist. Just get rid of them. But what does she do? She moves back to the Netherlands, sells her apartment, moves the paintings back to the Netherlands. She remarries, she opens up a boarding house so that she can have an income coming in. Her second husband also happens to be an artist, a, Dana, uh, a Dutch artist. And then she opens the very first gallery with a retrospective of Vincent van Gogh. It caught a lot of bad reviews. Terrible reviews, in fact. But she kept pushing the envelope forward. Anytime people wanted to borrow paintings to show that Vincent was part of this movement, she would always lend out paintings. And slowly and more and more and more towards the end of her life, people not only wanted to borrow them, but wanted to buy them. She sold more of Vincent's work while she was alive than he sold while he was alive. And not only did she sell it, she sold it at prices that were well above the price Vincent himself or Theo could have ever imagined asking for those prices. And as the prices climbed and as the notoriety that she spread, Van Gogh became more famous. Now things that helped contribute with that was, here's a woman in a, a patriarchal society of artists. You don't have a lot of women who are A, artists, or B, curating artwork, or C, selling artwork. But here, Joanna's doing it all. Then she finds a box of letters, this correspondence that I briefly spoke of. Now this correspondence, she conscribes into a book. She turns it into this novel of letters to Theo, and it's Van Gogh saying, this is what's happening. And then the correspondence from Theo responding to this letter, as well as the next letter from Van Gogh responding and then questioning, and then Theo responding, then questioning. So here we have a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the brothers. And she, as the notoriety of Van Gogh has been growing throughout these wonderful exhibits that she's been helping to participate in sending his work to and selling his work, she releases this book. She releases it two years after she's a widow owed a second time. First she really releases the book in Dutch and then she releases it again when she goes to Berlin to do another retrospective of Van Gogh's work, which this time, unlike the first time, it's open with open arms. It's welcomed with open arms. And she is not only given great applause and acclaim, but it is a far cry from where she started to where she ended with Van Gogh. If it wasn't for Joanna, we would not have the Van Gogh paintings that we do today. He would have probably been destroyed and we wouldn't have these wonderful depth of body of work that shows a man who had mental disorders, that had worked in a variety of jobs such as being a priest or a coal miner, an art dealer, as well as just an artist, someone that people can contribute a lot of emotive qualities to his paintings. They're amazing paintings that 
add a lot of depth and soul. He put a lot of himself into these paintings. He's not just doing paintings to make things pretty. He's doing it so that you, the viewer, can enjoy them because he's painting them not as they are, but as he imagines they are in either a more beautiful way or a more horrific way, putting those emotive qualities into this post-impressionist style of artwork. Thanks again, and don't forget to subscribe below.